Good morning, Thailand. My name is Alex, and I have some news updates from around the land of smiles for you today, this Friday, August 16th. Now, today, we will be talking about the Prime Minister mix-up, a Muay Thai murderer on the lam, and a tragic case of mistaken identity in Cambodia. Now, we will start with our first story, and that's that Thailand's Petong Tan Shinawatra is aiming for the Prime Minister role amid all of this political uncertainty. That's right, Petong Tan Shinawatra, daughter of the former Thai Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra, is vying for Thailand's Prime Minister position after her party, Pu Thai, came second in the 2023 election. Despite no previous government experience, she aims to continue her family's populist legacy. If successful, she would become Thailand's youngest Prime Minister and only the second woman to hold the position. Petong Tan's bid highlights the enduring influence of the Shinawatra family in Thai politics, despite their history of military coups and political turmoil. You know, I don't know why anybody would want this position at this point anyways. Uh, I don't think there's been, uh, outside of uh, the last uh, Bum Jai Thai party that was holding power after a military coup in 2014, we have not had uh, stability at the highest levels of the prime ministership. So uh, now it does seem the Shinawatras still have a very strong grip on political influence in Thailand, uh, especially considering she's got a very serious bid to become the next prime minister, despite never holding an elected office before. So uh, I don't know how that works. That seems uh, confusing to me that she would even be eligible to do that. However, Seems like it's in the cards. Uh, we'll see how strong the Shinawatra influence still is. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments about this whole uh, ministerial mix-up. Um, all right. Now, uh, before I move on, Mojo says, B-boys and girls do harder moves than gymnastic athletes on the pummel horse. I'm inclined to agree, man. I think I, I love the addition of breakdancing. I wish it would continue. Uh, but unfortunately, it seems like it's not. It's, it's gone. It's already been given the axe. Sad. Shano says it runs in the family. Yeah, I guess so. She would be the third Shinawatra prime minister. So, uh, yeah, that's, a, that's certainly a political dynasty as we uh, know it. We have those, obviously, in America as well with your Kennedys and your, your Bushes. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll see uh, what it looks like here in Thailand. All right, now uh, we're going to move on to our next story. As Buriram residents are anxious over the potential cancellation of the digital wallet scheme. Buriram residents are worried following the ousting of Prime Minister Shreta Tavisin, fearing the potential cancellation of the 10,000 baht digital wallet scheme, a key economic initiative from the Pua Thai Party. The scheme was seen as a vital lifeline in an area already struggling with rising living costs. Locals expressed frustration with the previous administration's focus on political issues rather than economic solutions. There's cautious hope that the new leadership will prioritize economic recovery and address the community's pressing needs. The fate of the digital wallet scheme remains uncertain as the country awaits a new prime minister. Well, yeah, this is a uh, this is a big uh, well wealth uh, a stimulus package that's gone out to the people. Uh, the money is meant to be spent within your local area in order to support your local economies. For, in my mind, as an economics uh, teacher by trade historically, I think this is this could potentially have a very good positive impact on uh, you know, millions of people around the country and millions of small, well, hundreds of thousands of small businesses as well. Uh, but now with all of the uh, political mix-ups happening, uh, a lot of this policy has come into question. However, no matter what, it does appear the Pua Thai Party will be retaining power and holding on to its coalition. So uh, hopefully... Fingers crossed, uh, this policy will still be enacted and uh, people will still get that economic relief uh, despite the uh, political turmoil that's going on here in Thailand. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Ron Fratsky says, where has Jay gone? Uh, he is busy COOing around. Okay, so uh, I'm uh, handling most of the uh, video content at this point while Jay is handling all of the other uh spreadsheets and numbers, the, the boring parts of the job that are very important. But uh, yes, uh, he will be joining sporadically as he can. And uh, you might be seeing some new personalities showing up in the near future as well. Um, all right. Now, uh, on to our next story. We have some... Uh, some crazy ones on deck, okay? Now, up next, we have a Muay Thai boxer who is on the run after killing his father in Yala. 
A 27-year-old Muay Thai boxer, Hassan Wahani, fatally slit his father's throat at their home in Yala province before fleeing to nearby Buyo Mountain Forest. The incident occurred on early August 15th, and the father, Wainu Wahani, sustained a deep neck wound. Hassan, known in the boxing world as Saifan Ratanapanu, uh, had recently returned home from Bangkok. His sister revealed there were no prior disputes between them and urged Hassan to surrender peacefully. The police are still searching for Hassan, who is well known in the Muay Thai community for winning major championships. A weird one, uh, this story. Obviously, uh, yes, he, he should turn himself in. Uh, the, 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 what's strange to me about this is that there was no uh, known conflict between the two. Now, uh, often that could be still run, still water's running deep, so maybe there was some deep-seated conflict between the two of them that even the sister did not know about, but also potentially just a mental break. So um, uh, we need to get to the bottom of this, and in order to do that, we need to uh, bring in this man who is currently running around the forests of some mountain uh, in survival mode. Uh, he is very well known in the Muay Thai community. He has won championships. So this is a tragic story. His career will be surely ended at this point. Uh, but hopefully we can get some answers to understand better what actually happened here. It's pretty crazy. Crazy, right, zombie? Nuts story. Anyways, uh, yeah, sad to hear it. Hopefully uh, the family can find some peace and uh, some answers. <clears throat> Uh, Shano says, oh my god, brutal way to die. Absolutely is. Uh, you know, I, I don't like going out anyways. Uh, too, too young. Knock, knock on wood for that. But uh, certainly not something you would expect. It, you know, I'm, I'm a big uh, true crime fan. It almost always is somebody close to the victim that ends up perpetrating the crimes. We already know who's done it. We just need to know why at this point. All right, uh, that's not the only uh, uh, hazardous story I'm going to be talking about today. Now, Pattaya police are cracking down on hazardous chemicals after a fatal drain cleaner incident. Pattaya police have inspected local hardware stores following the deaths of a mother and her two children from toxic fumes caused by a drain cleaner. The inspections, led by police captain Apinan Bunyarat, aim to identify sources of hazardous chemicals and educate the public on their safe use. Store owners emphasize the importance of following safety instructions, including proper ventilation and not mixing chemicals. The police are now focusing on preventing similar tragedies by ensuring that stores sell these products responsibly and educate customers on their correct usage. This story sucked. Like, uh, these, uh, this poor woman and her children, you know, I guess they weren't handling these things properly. They weren't ventilating properly. And all three of them uh, perished, unfortunately. So, uh, we take care with this stuff uh, in, in the West. We always uh, make sure that people, you know, you, you have to read the labels. You have to... Uh, understand how dangerous these chemicals are that you're working with. Unfortunately, here it seems like a case of someone who just did not understand what they were working with. Um, but uh, yeah, mixing these chemicals, using them unventilated areas can lead to tragedy as we've seen here. Uh, but now police are cracking down. So uh, they're going to put the responsibility on to store owners to make sure, hey, you know what you're dealing with here? And uh, hopefully we will not be repeating these stories anytime soon. Um, all right, yes. Uh, so, oh, yes, Mandalik brings up a good point. Everybody, do please like and subscribe if you haven't done that already. Got about 60 of you in here now, and I think that number is just going to be growing in the near future. Hopefully, we're, uh, we're trying to crack that 200,000 on YouTube. Uh, but, yeah, please do. That helps a lot. <clears throat> all right, uh, back to Bangkok for our next story. A boat collision on the Chao Phraya River has injured four. No tragedies, but still, uh, ouch. A boat collision on the Chao Phraya River under the Pinklao Bridge in Bangkok resulted in injuries to four passengers yesterday. A shuttle boat operated by Chao Phraya Express Boat collided with an empty chartered tour boat, leading to the hospitalization of two Canadian men and two Thai women. The passengers sustained head, leg, and chest injuries, but are in stable condition. Authorities have seized the licenses of both skippers and withdrawn the vessels from service as they investigate the incident. This area is being prepared for the upcoming Royal Barge Procession or rehearsals, which are happening in October. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's not good. If you're going to be having royalty on the river, you got to be making sure that everything is running smoothly. In this case, uh, fortunately, only injuries were sustained and nothing more tragic. Uh, but this is the kind of stuff. I got to tell you guys, I was over uh, having dinner on the river a couple of nights ago, and I saw some boats... 
A little too crowded for me. I saw way too many people on board. Now, in this case, there were not people that were, uh, they were not overcrowded boats or anything like that. But uh, I got to wonder sometimes about uh, the corners that are being cut uh, in terms of regulation and safety over there because uh, I've certainly seen uh, some questionable things. And now here we have uh, an incident that uh, could have resulted in, in uh, uh, you know, something more tragic. But uh, luckily, they're cracking down. They have uh, revoked the licenses of these skippers. And uh, hopefully, with uh, this kind of news coming out, people will be a little bit safer while they're operating those boats. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, Mandelik says, fortunately, uh, boats are going slowly. Yeah, that's kind of good. Nobody's really, you know, speed racing down the Chao Praia. So but that means that, but it is crowded, right? There are definitely a lot of boats out there. Shano says, luckily, the boat didn't sink. Imagine the water. Ugh. <laughs> hey, man, they were, they, they were sending Olympians into the Seine. The Seine? The Seine? The Seine? The Seine. That's how you say it in Paris. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I can only imagine what uh, the Chao Praia uh, is uh, stacking up to the quality of water over there. Uh, Mojo says, do they check them for yabha or ice, as it's called in the West, uh, like they do the taxi drivers? Do they check them? I don't know. I've definitely uh, questioned some of my grab drivers before. A little too neck twitchy for my tastes, but uh, yeah, that's still a big problem, the drug issue here in Thailand too. Not sure, uh, Mojo, but uh, uh, if I have an update, I'll let you know. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> I'm not gonna say your last comment, Mojo, funny. All right, uh, onto our last Thailand story, guys. We're gonna be talking about uh, something a little happier. Now, Thailand is inviting Japan to invest in the Red Line Railway extensions. Thailand's Ministry of Transport has invited Japanese companies to invest in extending the Red Line electric train system, aiming to boost the country's railway infrastructure. Transport Minister Jureya Jungrongkit met with Japanese Ambassador Otaka Masato on August 14th to discuss ongoing and future collaborations. The State Railway of Thailand is preparing plans for three key Red Line extensions, and once completed, Japanese investors will be invited to consider investment opportunities. The meeting also highlighted Thailand's plans to expand the automated guideway transit system to other lines and Japan's involvement in various infrastructure projects, signaling ongoing strong bilateral cooperation in transport development. Well, if anybody knows how to do public transport, it's the Japanese, at least the electric railways. Uh, and actually, you know, I kind of take that back. Uh, I've, uh, I've tried to uh, run the public transit systems in Tokyo and Osaka, and while they are nice trains, uh, they are absolutely confusing and don't make any sense. Uh, it, very difficult to navigate if you are not already familiar with them. But I don't think they're leaving the organization up to them, just uh, the construction and the technology. So this would be nice. Uh, Bangkok uh, needs more public transport uh, operation in order to alleviate uh, the ever-present traffic and congestion that we are all constantly dealing with. And plus, these are electric, so that will help uh, to uh, combat the uh, pollution problem as well. Uh, good news. I like all that. Uh, Mandelik says, uh, let them get bullet trains. That is what I'm really waiting for here in Thailand, uh, is uh, some some high-speed railway transit between the major cities, right? Like a Bangkok to Pattaya uh, public transport system, like a bullet train, if I could get there in like 30 minutes, 45, something like that. Mwah. I'd be taking it all the time. Uh, but it's very difficult. Uh, now, in China, uh, Japan, they have very extensive bullet train networks. Very effective. Everybody loves them. Everybody uses them. Uh, maybe uh, Thailand can think about getting on that as well because there is so much travel here. There's so much tourism. So it would only make sense to have more options for intercity travel. All right, guys, uh, that'll do it for our Thailand section of the news. I have two stories for you coming out of the greater ASEAN region. And we're going to start uh, by heading over to the Philippines. Now, the Philippines has upgraded the Basa Air Base in order to deter Chinese aggression. The upgrade of the Philippines' Basa Air Base, funded by the U.S., surprise, surprise, under the Pacific Deterrence Initiative, is expanded to bolster the readiness of the Philippines and U.S. militaries against Chinese aggression in the South China Sea. The base, located near Manila, will receive a new parking apron for up to 20 aircraft by July 2026. 
The modernization is part of the 2014 Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement, allowing U.S. forces to operate from Philippine bases. Analysts highlight the strategic importance of this upgrade in deterring China's assertive actions in the region, particularly around contested areas like the Scarborough Shoal. Uh, there's no way this goes viral on TikTok, but uh, anyways, I still think it's important to uh, report on this uh, because this is still the the big news always coming out of the Philippines is its cooperation with uh, foreign partners like the U.S. and uh, its constant conflict with Chinese vessels uh, that happen along its territorial borders in the South China Sea. Who's right, who's wrong? I'm not going to delve too much into that, but uh, the conflict is still raging. Philippines and China have recently signed some agreements in order to de-escalate the situation. However, moves like this uh, show a little bit of, uh, you know, still building up uh, uh, means and uh, capabilities. Now, uh, I'm sure that China is doing the same thing on their end, uh, but uh, it's it highlights the importance that uh, the American military plays in uh, this region. Now, America still maintains bases in Korea, Japan, the Philippines, uh, and uh, runs military exercises with Vietnam and, and China, or it's not China, excuse me, Thailand as well. So uh, I can imagine this is uh, putting pressure on China and uh, seeing this sort of like Pacific wall around them uh, for what they feel should be an area where they are the hegemon rather than America. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, it's still an ongoing political battle. Um, all right. Uh, build up in the region is a good thing, says Shano, coming from Australia, also a strong military partner of the United States. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm USA, too, I guess. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of uh, my country all the time, but sometimes I think uh, having this uh, global hegemon is kind of a good deterrent for, uh, uh, you know, military activity. So uh, it's sort of a Pax Americana going on at this point. Uh, now, uh, let's say, singing my car says, little known fact, Arnold Schwarzenegger's preferred seating in airplanes is, I'll be back. Good one, singing my car, keep them coming, love that. Um, all right, cool. Uh, now, uh, anyways, uh, on to our last story. This is a weird one, guys, that I uh, have coming out of Cambodia. A Nottingham family has been traumatized after a wrong body has been repatriated from Cambodia. Mm. A Nottingham mother, Maureen Thompson, was devastated after, after discovering that the wrong body had been repatriated from Cambodia following the death of her son, Kevin Nightingale. After Kevin, 39, was found dead in his Cambodian home, arrangements were made to return his body to the UK. However, when the family went to identify the body, they found it was a Canadian man in his 70s. The mix-up left the family horrified and traumatized. After weeks of distress, Kevin's body was eventually returned, but it was badly decomposed. The funeral service responsible has since refunded the repatriation costs, and I think that is not exactly enough to undo this trauma. Uh, sad story, uh, and uh, pretty, like, God, how do you get that wrong? Uh, my God, like a 39-year-old British man, 70-year-old Canadian man, look, I get it, white people look the same, Fine, but uh, at the end of the day, that's a big age difference, and there is no reason at all that this uh, that this story should have happened. And I, I feel terrible for the family that not only had to deal with the tragedy of losing their son in a very distant, faraway land uh, for for strange circumstances, and then uh, when you go to identify the body, it's not even your son. Uh, that opens the wounds up again. And uh, you know, what about the Canadian man's family who? Uh, whose body, his body, was sent to the completely wrong country as well. Uh, unacceptable. Uh, I, for me, I think that would be grounds to uh, shut down that operation of that funeral home for a while. A refund is not going to cut it in my book. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, please. Um, okay, now I'll get into the comments in just a second. Let me just wrap up the show for the, uh, the edited part, but I'll still talk to you guys live for a little bit. Uh, now, uh, guys, uh, that'll do it for our news stories. Uh, we will keep you updated. Go to thetiger.com. You can stay up to date on all of the happenings in Thailand, including what's going on with the, uh, the politics and uh, all that mess that's still uh, raging here in the Land of Smiles. Uh, also, please go to uh, asiannow.com where you can sign up, create uh, an account, and join the conversation 
conversation regularly with uh, like-minded and maybe uh, not so like-minded expats from the region. Uh, let us know your thoughts on all of the different subjects there. And you can post your own uh, topics as well to uh, see what other people think about whatever you're thinking about. Uh, finally, we are still looking for a social media manager. So if any of you knows uh, some young uh, bilingual, we need Thai and English speaking uh, people that are interested in helping us to grow our social media pages, uh, we are still in the hunt for that. Send resumes to info at thetiger.com. That'll do us for now. And now I will get into the comments, everybody. 